Hello Watchmen of Ephraim. I'm going to do this video on Ephesians 2.15. I have up here verses 14 and 15. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but the focus is going to be on verse 15. Well, actually I'm going to do something different concerning the mainstream Christianity or what I witness to you is Mystery Babylon, the Roman Catholic Church and her harlot children, the Protestant movement that came out of the Roman Catholic Church but continued in her major doctrines like eternal torture and keeping Christmas and Easter and all these pagan Christianized holidays. And what has emerged in these latter days, the Hebrew Roots Movement and their argument, of which I firmly believe and witness that they are the synagogue of HaSatan. They literally want to be Jews. They believe they are the guardians of the Torah. Actually, they are the destroyers of it. And they are the destroyers of the whole work of God that's in the Torah. Which the Torah is, ultimately, is the plan of God to restore humanity or to bring humanity to, into the... the, the into Son of God, Helio Son of God, state, circumcised in three phases, beginning with the Messiah, as I have mentioned many times before. So on one hand, you have mainstream, who has said the law is abolished, it's no more, and you know what? As written by Moses, they are correct, as I will show you in Ephesians. What we're going to do is something that, and I, and I, and I wanted to play a short video by a, a Hebrew Roots person concerning uh, their argument for this, this verse 15. And, and I do believe they are correct in, in what it, Paul meant it to be in that particular verse. But it's much, much more than, than just uh, this this uh, man-made structure that was put around the temple, as I'll touch on in the beginning here. If you read the context of Ephesians, the first two, three chapters, man, it's a masterpiece in Torah, in illusions of Torah, of which the Messiah fulfilled and gives you as a gift in the heavenly places or in the heavenlies. Once again, what is all this? You have, a, and I'm going to bring this in, the curse of mystery Babylon, the curse or the paradigm, and the paradigm of the Hebrew Roots Movement. Or what I'd also like to call, and I have a lot of windows here, and I ask you to forgive me, uh, because I... I can't really remember exactly where these are in order because as just as I think of them, I pop, I put them up. Right now, the Hebrew Roots Movement, they're under the curse of what I call Herbert and Luma Armstrong's paradigm. Uh, such as this. And I read this booklet in, in 1985. Pagan holidays are God's holy days. Which? Which ones do you keep? Or, which day is the Sabbath of the New Testament? The problem is with this argument is, this was not the argument in the first century. Because Roman Catholicism, the pagan Christianized Roman Catholic Church, and their Christianized holidays of Christmas, Easter, Halloween, uh, All Hallows' Eve, Valentine's Day did not exist in the first century. 
the so-called Seventh-day Sabbath that was changed to Sunday did not exist in the first century. That wasn't the argument. All these epistles are, are the, they are the, they are about the progressive fulfillments of the Torah, especially the holy days by the Messiah. Transformed from the Torah of works to the Torah of faith and the Torah of the priesthood or the firstborn ones. These things get weaved into these epistles by allusions. Paul purposely did that so that you, the coming priesthood, or the few, or the wheat, or the called, or the elect, or those who believe, those who are chosen, or the church, or the ecclesia, was given to you to figure out. The problem is the Roman Catholic Church, well, they, in the end, they completely forbid the reading of the Bible, of the Word, of these epistles, and of the Torah, banishing the Torah, basically. And what you had was New Testament theology. So going back here, <clears throat> I have these verses to read. For he is our peace. Bada bing, bada boom. Right there, that ought to tell you something. Paul is witnessing something from the from the Torah. For he is our peace. If you don't read the Torah, though, you probably wouldn't know what this means uh, specifically. Who made both one and broke down the middle wall of partition, having abolished in his flesh the hostility, the law of commandments contained in ordinances. <coughs> we'll get to the uh, definition. The, uh, the Greek word for ordinances that he might create in himself one new man from the two, making peace. What is this new man from the two? Now, that's what I've been pounding away on lately. What is this new man from the two? Where does he get this stuff at? Actually, concerning the... the uh, the, the priesthood of which we are now, the priesthood, the whole law of Moses, as written by Moses, has been abolished. Concerning you to keep, to do. And you'll see this in the first two to three chapters. I might go into the third chapter. Well, I will go into the third chapter. Right up at the top there, for he is our peace, shows you that uh, you don't have to do a certain thing that was required for fellowship with God. These ancient Israelites. Uh, by the way, the priests had fellowship with God. They were dwelling in his uh, domain, in God's domain. The... Uh, shadow and copy of the heavenly places or things or the heavenlies let's click out of that one these are kind of scattered around i give key verses here thus says the lord in an acceptable time have i heard thee and in the day of salvation i have helped thee in a day of salvation and i will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant to the people to establish the earth to cause to inherit the desolate heritage, heritages. So God's going to turn the earth into the Garden of Eden, into the fulfillment of Genesis uh, chapters 1 through 3 or whatever. A chapter, yeah, you know, the, where the garden originated in, in, in the beginning of Genesis. It was a shadow of the good things to come. This is a prophecy about the Messiah. You know that the Messiah had to be saved from death? 
There was a day of salvation for him. And that was on the eighth day, the morrow after the Sabbath, when he rose from the dead. And what did God promise him? I will give you as a covenant of the people or to the people to establish the earth. The Messiah himself not only will be the mediator of the covenant, which at its core was the... Let me just click out of this. Was the Ten Commandments... I will give you as a covenant to the peoples, as I've been touching on. Let me go back down here. Uh, not only the mediator, but he's the, uh, he's the covenant himself. He is our peace. Notice that. He is our peace. Which, you don't have to jump through a certain hoop in the law of Moses to... I'll just touch on that. You already know. I mean, if you follow this channel, I've touched on this before. Let's get out of that one. Forgive me for hopping around here. Notice. Messiah is going to introduce a radical new concept that will begin to be in force after he rises from the dead. Just read Luke 24. It's called the Torah of Faith, which Paul will begin to expound on. Start with the book of Romans, then go to Galatians. Especially chapter 1 and chapter 3, which I may go in and touch on again. Then they said, the people, the Jews, said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? What did Jesus say? Keep the Sabbath. Keep the holy days. Wear your tassels. Eat your clean meat. No. You're going to get all that as a gift through grace, through what he accomplished. Yeshua answered and said to them, This is the work of God that you believe in him who he has sent. This is the work of God. He's going to introduce the work of faith, the Torah of faith, the righteousness of God himself. Without the Torah being witnessed by the Torah and the prophets. All right, let me click out of that. Review, eh, just key. I don't think I have any more. I might have one other one. I could have put one or two other ones down. I should have put one or two other ones down. But anyways, what was this, uh, uh, this middle wall that he abolished in his flesh, among other things? I mean, at the very end of it, I mean, you'll see. You'll see it as plain as day. So in order to, to, to go to be near God, who dwelt in this temple, in the holiest of all back here, this is Solomon's temple, uh, renamed Herod's temple when Herod did a big renovation project, which took like 40, uh, 46 years, yes. It's referred to in John chapter 2. It's taken a taken 46 years to build this uh, temple and will you destroy it you see uh do you see the, that the uh, the temple was also a shadow of the good things to come oh it is in 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 revelation 21 22 there's an ultimate fulfillment of this but who who was the tabernacle of God that came and tabernacled among his brethren? Who was the temple of God? Do you see it's these radical new things that are being introduced by the Messiah? And in the end, you'll see that, uh, well, all these hoops you had to jump through to get close to God are 
abolished in him. Of course, the Hebrew rooters look to the future and they see the millennium and they see the common land person appear. And what they don't want to witness to you is they're going to have shepherds set up over them that are going to feed them with what you're going to be fed today. That it's all through him. He is the covenant. This is why Paul in this epistle is always saying in him, through him, by him. You'll see it. 20 some times, I don't know how many, I forget how many times. In him, through him. And Paul did not say because of what we're going to go over once again. It's okay now, uh, my, my brethren at Ephesus, it's okay now to uh, keep Christmas and Easter and Sunday as the seventh day Sabbath. Didn't exist. False paradigm. Anyways. Oh, anyways, here, right, right in front of me. Right down here to the left, you can see this little uh, fence here or wall here. You have the temple building itself. You have the women's court. You have the court of the Gentiles all on the way on the outside. Okay. I mean, you can even break this down as uh, the, uh, the Garden of Eden, the actual garden itself. And then um, um, the, the, uh, the uh, land of Eden outside of that. And then... Outside, you have the uh, the unconverted, whatever. And, I mean, this is a study in itself. But anyways, you have this, you can barely see it here. All around this uh, this temple was these, these you'll notice these little people, these, these, these little dots or people, I would think. And there are the Gentiles, the uncircumcised, the ones that aren't proselytes that, that became Jews themselves physically and you, know, you get circumcised you had to come to come there and keep the Passover you had to wear your tassels and all that stuff but hey inside the shadow and copy of the heavenly things who was inside there here's the the um, the holy place and then the back in the back here the holiest of all who were these uh, people in white garments uh, once again, the thing that has been is what will be that which is done is what will be done. Who were these beings in white, as I might say, beings in white garments? Who, who were they who served the shadow and copy of the heavenly things? And who, uh, who would come out and, uh, or... Here's another picture of the temple and administer the Torah to these people that are dressed in in regular clothes. Oops, I hope I didn't dressed in regular clothes. Well, that's uh, it's just a shadow of what's coming in the future. You need a priesthood first and you need people to rule over and teach. That's your reward. You're going to feed these people with knowledge. I don't mean to get off track, but. So here's the uh, here's this wall once again a little bit closer. Here's this wall of partition once again that went all the way around to the other side. That side was the court of the Gentiles. These unconverted, so-called unconverted, in the shadow couldn't enter into this. Uh, it was a man-made structure. It was it was not. It was not something constructed. Well, it wasn't an original design. It wasn't. It, it was something that was to keep these people out. It was, you know what? Let me just. Let me just. It was a. It was. It was an additional thing that 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 the Jews put up to keep these Gentiles from having access to God. And we'll see that. Well, through him. You don't have to jump through all these hoops, even the law as written by Moses. This is they had they had tablets or signs around on these on this wall all around the temple, and this is what it said: No stranger is to enter within the balustrade. I hope I pronounced that right. Round the temple. You know, beyond this this 
wall of partition and enclosure. Whoever is caught will be himself responsible for his ensuing death. Okay. So the Hebrew rooters, their argument is the law of Moses was not abolished. You got to keep the law of Moses. They'll give you this verse with the Greek. Let me just click out of that. With the Greek word for ordinances. And I believe they're right. And on the other hand, you have, I mean, I mean, as far as what the word means. But when you read the context, which they never do, of Ephesians, you're going to see that the law, as written by Moses, is abolished. Because why? Because you are a finished product. As they never read, I mean, they never read the context. It's just pagan Orthodox mainstream Christianity. They find it. And their arguments. That the law is abolished, and you can, it's uh, this um, this this burden or this uh, bondage has been abolished, and you're free now to worship God with with these holidays. Well, that wasn't the argument. And on the other hand, you have, you know, it's just a fake paradigm. They're in a false world. They're in a false paradigm. It was not about which days do you keep. You get all these things and you'll see it once again in this, uh, this epistle. I know I've been covering the same things, and, but you know what? I, this is something I have to cover. It's part of my ministry and I've been meaning to do it on this verse. So if we go to the... Um, We go to the Greek for this verse. He has abolished in his flesh the commandments written uh, contained in ordinances. I'll give it to him. I'll give it to the Hebrew rooters that the specific verse was talking about this wall of partition. But overall, in the context, we see that the whole law as written by Moses doesn't pertain to you. But as shadows of the good things to come, you, got, you should know what they foreshadowed and foreshadow beyond what, what has only been fulfilled up to this point. We are not to add or take away from God's word. Deuteronomy 4.2 But we also have to understand that the law, the Torah, actually the whole five books of Moses, is a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of those things. So if we don't add or take away and we just believe what God says, it's a beautiful thing. We can begin to understand what Paul was talking about. We can begin to understand, we can begin to have the truth and not bend and twist and lie as both these movements are doing. If we read the context of Ephesians, we can see if you, if you can step outside the paradigm or the curse of Herbert and Loma Armstrong, if you can step outside and see these two movements go at each other, you can see how they're lying. You can see how they're bending and twisting the scriptures and the verses to fit their fake paradigm. All righty, let's get rid of, um, yeah, should I get rid of? Yeah, let's just let's just go on here. Let's get into this epistle, which many uh, 
uh, scholars. Just uh, this is like the pinnacle of Paul's writings, his his epistle, his epistles. But what they really don't understand is this is just heavily Torah. This is the righteousness of God without the Torah or you know, without the Torah being witnessed by the Torah and the prophets through him. Now, I gave you that verse about he is the covenant and you'll see this plainly. You'll see where Paul gets all this stuff at. And a little sip of coffee. I'm not going to expound on every verse or whatever, every but you know, uh, you know what I, I I didn't write any verses down. I'll just go to where the Spirit leads me. Paul, an apostle of Yeshua Messiah, by the will of God. God will His will will be done. In the end, no one will be able to turn to the right or the left hand. It was by the will of God that Paul be an apostle. To the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Yeshua Messiah, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's the one God and there's the one Lord, whom God made Lord in Christ. And the, the greeting uh, to uh, the both the uh, Jew and the Greek. Uh, grace and uh, peace. Shalom and uh, grace. Anyways, uh, blessed be another uh, verse witnessing the only God. The only Yahweh. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So Yeshua has a God. Let's just move on. Who has blessed us with <clears throat> who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Now notice, in Messiah, or through Messiah, okay, and through the fulfillments of the Torah. That's what his mission statement was. He didn't come to add or take away. He only came to fulfill. And what I mean by fulfillment is the end fulfillments. Uh, when he did the law, or when he was under the law, to, he kept it. In other words, when he, oh, just to clarify once again, when he, when he kept the Passover every year, he kept the Passover. He didn't fulfill the Passover by keeping it, by eating a lamb. He fulfilled it by going outside the camp on the appointed day. I mean, the holy day's witness. Excuse me. I may have already. Pat the, the calendar witnesses, according to the appointed times, what the fulfillments are, the end fulfillments. What you're getting is a bunch of lies by uh, uh, people in the Torah movement saying uh, the fulfillment is that he came to magnify the Torah by keeping it perfectly. And that gets imputed to you for righteousness. It's such a perversion. The appointed times show you when these fulfillments take place. On the 14th day of the first month in the calendar of God, that's when it was fulfilled by Messiah going outside the camp and becoming our Passover lamb. And notice the word redemption because we're going to run into that word here shortly. Notice Passover here and notice redemption. I wonder if this actually gets bigger and I don't want it that big. Redemption. on here in notice in Messiah just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love he chose us in 
him. Notice that. In him. Where did Paul get this verse at? Well, I'm working on that in my mind. Genesis 1, verses 3 and 4. Before the foundation of the world, all right, Messiah and you, excuse me, Messiah and you, the first fruits, had a glory. You were with him before the foundation of the world. And then God said, let there be light. All right, I'm just touching on that. And there was light. But that word, that Hebrew word, implies something other than the light that appears in uh, on the fourth day of creation. Yeah, that's a whole another video in itself. But all things were made on account of Him, not that He pre-existed or through Him that He was some He was creating. No. The, this light appeared before the foundation of this present earth. Now we're really getting into something that hasn't even been, I haven't even touched on yet. Okay, this will solve the mystery. All things were created through him, or more properly on account of him. Because before he begins to, this, this, Creation or renewing of the earth. If you believe in the gap theory, this light appeared first. And it was on account of him and us, the first fruits in him. These he foreknew, he what? glorified together. It's all... You're, you're dealing with a genius here. A master genius. Who has a very detailed plan concerning the redemption of humanity. Which you have now by faith. As you will see. Alright. Chose us in him. Notice, in him. I will give you as a covenant to the nations. In him. Before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now, in the end, whose love? Yours? Your own? Which the Ten Commandments required. Your own love which in the end failed? Or is it his love? Or is it their love? Well, it's their love. Yeah, we'll get to it. Well, I could maybe do it right now, but yeah, we'll get to it. If I remember, <laughs> there's a, a lot of stuff. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Yeshua to himself. Notice, by Yeshua Christ to himself. According to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Man, there's a, man, there's a lot there. To the praise of his glory by the grace, by his grace which he made us accepted in the beloved, uh, having predestinated us. Okay, according to the good pleasure of his will, where can you find all this stuff? Adoption as sons. What kind of sons? Helio sons, as that translates. Where do you find this? Adoption as sons. These sons of Aaron, Moses, again, does all the work. Takes the clothes off and he puts these garments on them. Washes them. Puts these garments on them. 
Where do you find this stuff? You find it in the Torah. This is the, this is the pinnacle of the righteousness of God without the Torah being witnessed by the Torah and the prophets. This is the righteousness of God himself. Not your own righteousness, which is your own effort by the Ten Commandments. This is really deep stuff. But it's not stuff that's... It's just the argument of fixed appointed times, shadow times versus garbage, worthless pagan holidays and shadow appointed times that don't do anything for you to sanctify you. Oh, they did if you wanted to what? If you wanted to dwell and go, go into and dwell and live in that shadow land But in the end, you died. You died before a, a god in a temple that had a that had a partition. You didn't have access to, did you? Or did they? How long will this video last? I might have to actually take a break and come back later. And this is just there's just so much in this this verse alone. Wow. Um, predestined us to adoption as sons. What kind of sons? I do your, this your own research. Why did he exchange the firstborn of every Israelite to the firstborn, to exchange them to the Levites and to Aaron and his sons? I have taken the Levites instead of all the firstborn. The Levites are mine. I am their inheritance. I am Yahweh. I am their inheritance. Where do you get that ever witnessed by a Torah keeper? Firstborn among many brethren. The barley, the wheat, glorified together. whom he foreknew he conformed to be in the image of his son. Picture this as Yeshua without the uh, priesthood garments and this uh, tunic underneath. Yahweh, the Ancient of Days. Moreover, these he foreknew... Uh, these he also justified, and these he justified, these he also glorified. Past tense. I do believe. I do believe that's past tense. It's already done, and it was done at the beginning of the creation before the foundation of the world. To be rulers over what? The promised land. Which is Romans 4.13. The earth. And the universe for that matter. The kingdom, this kingdom of spirit beings is coming down to the earth. Going to reign over the common land people. So as you will see. In verse 12, yeah, who these uh, sons are. They're the firstborn. They're the firstborn ones. Okay. To the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Now, if you go to chapter 22 of Leviticus, this is a good translation here. I'm just, I'm cutting for time. I, and I, last week I went there. 
What two things concerning a bull, a sheep, or a goat? What two things were required for them to be given to Yahweh? To be accepted on the people's behalf. Number one, it had to be without blemish. And number two, it had to be given to God on the eighth day and beyond. So an eighth day sacrifice. The only way you can be accepted and appear before Yahweh in his presence. You have to be completely circumcised of which Paul will you know, he'll address in illusions. You have to be circumcised. You have to be and that's in the plan of Torah. Tomorrow after the Sabbath. Shavuot Pentecost. On the eighth day, you, you have to be perfect without blemish, and you have to be, what, accepted also in him, in the beloved, uh, an eighth day sacrifice, not taught. You can read that yourself. The latter portion of uh, chapter 22, Leviticus 22. Seven days it shall be with its mother, and on the eighth day afterwards it will be accepted as a sacrifice to Yahweh. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Now we have a holy day and probably two holy days here. Because there are two holy days that involve blood. And there are two holy days of which Israel had uh, um, concerning uh, redemption for them, for their sins. Notice once again, in him. In him. It's all about him we have oops in him we have redemption through his blood so let's go to um, notice pass over we have redemption through his blood okay in him in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins. So what do we have? Passover. Look at redemption. In other words, uh, 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 and let me, may I back up? When did that redemption take place for you? Did you have to wait until the 14th day of the first month to get redemption? Did you have to be, to, to, for the kinsman redeemer to buy you back? To redeem you from all your sins, your kinsman redeemer, and to buy you back from the bondage of sin. I am Yahweh your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, excuse me, out of the house of bondage. in him so listen to what Paul's saying I will give you as a covenant to the nations to the peoples in him you have redemption through his blood notice it's a very probably a poor picture the blood he was he was bathed in blood because your sins were taken on in his flesh and that blood is bathed, cleansed. You of your sins. 
He took it on. He became sin who knew no sin. That is a day of atonement uh, illusion, by the way. In him, not in a lamb. If you want to go dwell in that shadow land and live a good, live a, a blessed life with material crops and good health and not be barren, well, that was for you, for the Torah having a shadow of the good things to come. That's the law as written by Moses. But in him you have redemption through his blood. In him I will give you as a covenant to the peoples, to the nations. Paul did not say now it's okay to keep Easter. You're redeemed as a first fruit son. As a priest, that's why you had 10 burnt offerings on this uh, shadow Shavuot feast day. And uh, I do believe uh, two peace offerings. Okay, it's quite a bit in order to become a priest. I need a sip of water. You know what? I'm either going to have to make this in parts or let me get a sip of water. Because there's so much in here, I want to drive it home. In him, you have redemption through his blood. So what does it do? What, what, <clears throat> what does it do with this this uh, ordinance? I'll show you. Uh, we're not going to call this a, a, a decree of men. Okay, this uh, we're not call this dogma, but I want to show you something here. Let's type in the word ordin ordinance. This concerns the Passover in Exodus 12, verse 14. Notice. So this day, that's the Passover, shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to Yahweh throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting notice. Ordinance. Let me ask you something. Okay, this is the law as written by Moses. Okay, now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. What blood? The blood of what? The blood of an animal. It shall be a memorial. That's the law as written by Moses in its ordinance. So let me ask you something. Of course, the, uh, um, the Hebrew rooter who's looking into the future to the common land people will bring the dirty little doctrine in of obedience. Got to keep the, as, you know, as obedience. But they, they call it righteousness also because they'll quote uh, 2 Timothy 3, uh, 15, 16. Let me ask you something. You throw out the paradigm. Uh, with good works and faith in Messiah, what he did to you, uh, he for he is our Passover, right? That's what that's what Paul said, uh, verse seven and eight. I do believe, First uh, Corinthians five. For Christ is our Passover. Can you be saved? Can you broad be brought into the kingdom of the son of his love? Where did Paul get that, by the way? He translated the Israelites out of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love. Yes, uh, Joshua brought him in to the kingdom. It's, Paul's just, he's just... Colossians 1.13, that's all Torah. 
How did he translate you into the kingdom of the son of his love as a firstborn Huia's son? By the work of that law or by the hearing of faith? That was Paul's argument. Have we made void the Torah through faith? No, yea, we have established the Torah. This was Paul's argument. It was never about fixed appointed times versus fixed appointed times. As I witnessed to uh, four Torah keepers, even a, a former minister of the Worldwide Church of God, All of them denied you got the Passover by faith. They said you had to do it. You see how the work of God is being destroyed. I mean, this alone here, this redemption. What did Peter say? You weren't redeemed with silver or gold by those shekels of the sanctuary in Exodus chapter 30. But with the precious blood of Yeshua as a lamb without spot, this was Paul's argument. You know, this is this is this is being being destroyed. Mainstream Christianity, good chance most of them won't even know what the Passover's about. Torah keepers, many of them now are saying the, the gospel is Torah. <laughs> That's the good news. You get to keep Torah. That's how bad it's getting. You have to do it. But you weren't redeemed by a lamb. You can keep this, you can keep this shadow feast all you want. And that's what that was the whole argument in Colossians 2, 16, 17. You can keep this shadow feast day all you want. It was for a shadow people. A shadow people given by a Shadow priesthood, if we want to look at that as the shadow, to get you into a shadow promised land. You have to believe what God said. The Torah is a shadow. And it really helps, too, to know where you are in the timeline of redemption. There's a difference between people and priest. You know, this is a hard concept uh, in itself. My wife has a hard time with it. A priest is none other, once again, a, a finished product. A, 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 a literal son of God. A son as, as, he, as, he, as if he reproduced himself, which is what he's doing. A being with inherent righteousness. <sighs> Oftentimes I get way. Oh, anyways, I try to. I try to tell her, I'm a. I'm a physical therapist assistant. When I went into the ther physical therapist, this is when I enrolled into college in that program, I went in as a physical therapist assistant student. Now, the only person that's under me in authority is a rehab aid, a physical therapy aid. Okay. They do stuff like answer phones, file charts, file documents. Uh, get insurance authorizations for me to treat people. Look, 
I didn't enter school. I didn't enter when I believed. I didn't enter as a physical therapy aide or a common land person. And I not wasn't trained to do their work. That's why Paul basically called this stuff stuff that a child does that differs not from a slave. To a priest, putting out leaven every year, seven days, is nothing but baby stuff. It's stuff that childs do, infants do. That's why Paul commanded the children, uh, honor your father and your mother. Ephesians chapter, uh, the beginning of chapter uh, six, I do believe. Might be off. I'm terrible. Five, six. Now I'm, now I'm, I'm just terrible. I can't remember. And I, 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 I'm in Exodus now, but anyways. Honor your father and mother. Which is the first commandment with promise. He's, 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 he's appealing to a child as someone who has to start off with something a child would start off with. Anyways, I wasn't, I wasn't given the rank. I don't have the rank now, even though I haven't really received my priesthood. I have it by faith. I don't have the rank of an aide that does unskilled work. Hmm? Anyways. I'm trying to drive this point home. You're not a common person of the land who had to do all this stuff, but in the end, they're going to get it by all by faith, too. But they're going to assemble on these days, and you get to teach them all this stuff. So anyways, as written by Moses, what? It's an ordinance. Yeah. You can keep the Passover on the appointed day all you want. There's no righteousness concerning... Getting into the real kingdom and having aeonian life, life for the eons, life for the, you know, instead of temporary life, doing a, doing a shadow feast day, which he fulfilled on that appointed time. You keep it all you want. It's a beautiful thing and you can teach your children about it. But it does nothing for you for righteousness. It does nothing for you. And there's no command uh, to keep it. As written by Moses. For Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Uh, with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth combo in both those uh, festivals there so it's in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins toss in redemption uh, concerning the day of atonement once a year Israel had to be redeemed from their sins on the day of atonement well you got that by faith he is our atonement. He is our covenant. And only, not only for us, but also for the whole world. I'll give you a, as a covenant to the peoples and the nations. Man, where, do, where do they get this stuff? Where do they get their words? Where did the Apostle John get his words? According to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who, f now notice, verse 12, that we who first trusted in Messiah Yeshua should be to the praise of what? 
his glory. So, I mean, what are the Hebrew root? Why do you think? Do they really know what they're doing? As we get on into chapter 2, and they believe that you're uh, brought near to the, to the commonwealth of Israel, they actually believe you're being grafted in, and this is, what, this is actually what you should look like. And in reality, they say it's forever, the little God of God's forever. This is what you're going to be doing forever. What have they done? What does Satan not want you to know? He doesn't want you to know your destiny as a Huio son. So in reality, you're going to be some foreign creature from the family of God to the praise of his glory. What does the Ancient of Days look like once again? I, I, again, this is just not taught. And, and if I go through his epistles, this is always going to this is always going to come up in his epistles, in allusions, as it does in this epistle. Actually, this epistle is 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 expounding on the high position of the Messiah and his body. Not a freak Jew Hebrew who's the law of Moses is in his heart and he's going to keep it, all of these laws for eternity. And I've heard that. But a Helios incorruptible son. See, this is stuff you never, I mean, if you, if you go and do, if you go and look at, like, go, go listen to videos on both sides. Ephesians 2.15. All you'll get is this fake paradigm that I've been expounding on. That we who first trusted in Messiah should be to the praise of his glory. Where is he pulling this stuff from? What does the Ancient of Days look like once again? Is this what the Ancient of Days looks like? Is he a Hebrew? Does he speak Hebrew? Or does he have white hair like wool, white garments, which reflects, this, this glory he has reflects his character, which is pure love. <laughs> you, you, both these movements destroy the whole work of God. Hey, you're on a cloud in heaven, staring at a trinity for eternity. You're outside the family of God. What does he mean by we who first trusted in Messiah? He's talking about the first fruits. The wheat harvest. As James touched on, we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures, according to his word. Well, that's in the Torah. First fruits. Okay. How did you become a first fruit? How did you become uh, the one of those who first trusted in Messiah? Did you have to wait until the appointed time? Or did you get that status when you believed? Get out of the 21st century and the 20th century and go back to the 1st century before this fake pagan religion emerged cloaked in the name of Messiah and this fake Hebrew roots movement emerged out of that. Hey, 
have we made void the Torah of Pentecost? And the, Jew, and the Gentile and the Jew here, the Israelite, we haven't voided it. We've established it, the Torah of faith. Okay. Morrow after the Sabbath, or what? The eighth day. Never get this. Go look at their videos. You'll never get the context of Ephesians. We who first trusted in Messiah, the first fruits, in him you also trusted, verse 13, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh-oh. What do we have in verse 13? We have another holy day. We have the gospel of your salvation in whom you first trusted. First fruit, first trusted, praise of his glory. Um, obtained an inheritance in him, predestinated. What's that inheritance? Sonship, yeah, but as a firstborn one, as a priest. The gospel of the wheat harvest, the gospel of the ages, Revelation 14, 6. You have the barley, you have the wheat, the few, the first fruits, then you have the grapes, as verse 10 will touch on. Excuse me. Um, oh, you know what? I Boy, I, I actually skipped over. How did I do that? I got to back up. Oh, well. How did I skip over verse 10? I'm going to shut this down and make these into parts because this is just, this is just, this is going to be on Ephesians. I mean, you don't have to be a, uh, you, you don't have to be a scholar. What you have to do is read the Torah every day. And you have to accept that the, the Torah is a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of those things. And you'll see the words and the patterns. You have to believe that everything comes through him. Uh, verse 7, once again, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Here, uh, this word uh, uh, understanding, uh, this is a deep plan that's buried in the Torah. In dark sayings, hidden truths. Well, you're going to see this word mystery come in. Notice verse 9. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, the mystery, the sacred secret, the hidden truth, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. Now, he'll give you a big illusion here as to where this, uh, <clears throat> according to this, this pleasure and purpose in himself, this mystery, uh, where he's pulling this from, that in the dispensation, of the fullness of the times, the appointed times, this is an allusion to the holy days, he might gather together specifically tabernacles and the eighth day. The dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together, gather, note that word gather, a good translation, gather together in one, all things or all in Christ. This is an allusion to the feast of ingathering.
touched on this one time before. Um, Deuteronomy 16. Gone many times before and will go to many times again. You shall observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days when you have gathered from your threshing floor. Now notice, when you have gathered from your threshing floor and from your wine press. Threshing floor, the wheat, the barley, and from your wine press. When you have gathered, where did Paul get his words? Where did Messiah get his words? And you shall rejoice in your feast. This is talking about the Feast of Tabernacles and the eighth day after. The Feast of Ingathering. You and your son and your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, and in the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, the widow, who are gathered within your gates, everyone. Three times a year, all sure your male shall appear before Yahweh, your God, in the place which he chooses. That's at Jerusalem. Where is that fulfillment? Where did he put his name? Where are all going to be gathered to him in the end? Revelation 21, 22. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them. He will be their God and they shall be my people. The end fulfillment. Let's just go to back to Ephesians. And this would be a three hour video and it ain't happening. Right. Gather together in one. Gather your wine press and your threshing floor. The wheat, the barley, the grapes, all will be gathered in. Where did Paul get his words? See, this is a brilliant letter uh, filled with Torah, illusions. Uh, Ephesians 1. I'm going back and I'm going to wrap it up here in a couple minutes. Part 1. Gather all, notice, in Messiah, in his accomplished work. Because he was what? Because he was the first of first fruit of the first fruits, this ritual on the morrow after the Sabbath during the days of unleavened bread was uh, when the priest waved it before uh, Yahweh on the morrow after the Sabbath, the eighth day, in other words, when Christ became a new creation, he was the guarantee, when he fulfilled this, he was the guarantee of future harvests. He was the guarantee of the wheat harvest or the first fruits to God and to the Lamb. And also the grape harvest. He was the guarantee of it. So it's in him, through him. You can keep these holy days all you want in the letter. It was a guarantee of a future physical harvest. You can keep it as written by Moses. It's abolished concerning the spiritual harvest he is the guarantee morrow after the sabbath read it right here resurrection okay he's the guarantee of a future harvest but it's 
for you to know these things as a priest and the common land people coming in the next age are going to keep these days and they're going to come to you and say, you know, what's the meaning? Picture you once again in the white garments. You're a priest. You're a Helio son. You're in the kingdom. And people gather around you during the, uh, during the Feast of Shavuot. What's the meaning of this feast? Or, forgive me, the, um, 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 Actually, I'm not talking. I'm, I'm talking about the uh, the uh, the day of the wave sheaf offering, in which the first of the first fruits were, were given to God on the eighth day. Today you are my son. Today I have begotten you. You are my beloved son. And they're doing this ritual in the kingdom. And people have gone up as the first of three annual festivals, and they're coming to you. They're asking you, why? What's the meaning of this? Well, it's the guarantee of a future physical harvest. <laughs> no, that's you're, you're going to teach the end fulfillments. Uh, uh, child. You know, Yeshua called his disciples little children. He was a type of father to them. Little children, little child. We do this as a memorial. We do this to remember that Yeshua, through him, notice Paul said, in him, through him, through Yeshua, what he accomplished, what he fulfilled, guaranteed uh, a future spiritual harvest of me, picture this you, and you, As uh, now we are in this reality, in this millennium rest, the millennial rest, you will receive this in full, the redemption uh, uh, at the end of the 1,000 year reign. That's when you will be circumcised, just as I was circumcised, beginning by faith on the morrow after the Sabbath during Shavuot, but I got it on the Day of Atonement. You see how it's a riddle, how it's a mystery. Day of Atonement restoration in the latter days, the last trumpet, the 120th Jubilee, that's when I was officially redeemed and received uh, my spirit body. That's why we uh, keep this, because we remember that the Messiah, he is, all right? He is the uh, wave sheaf offering, okay? Because he did it. He did it, not you did it. They will do it to. Uh, they will do it to. Uh, um, to. They will do it to remember. Okay. There will be. It will be no righteousness. It will be. Um, they, the common land people, and you will teach them the truth. Okay. Right now, you have leaders in the Hebrew roots movement that are destroying this. Okay. Going on here. You, you job as a priest is to learn these things because you're going to teach these things in the future uh, concerning your head, your husband. Your husband is not Moses, the shadow, mediator. Notice, 
both of which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. You're going to bring the evil angels. You're going to turn them back. Things that are in heaven or dwell in the, in the, in the, uh, in the heavenlies, in the spirit realm. A very hated doctrine. That's your job as a priest. What does, it, what does the Day of Atonement, once again, what does it say? Restoration. Apocatastasis. Acts 3, 19 through 21. Okay. Skip back down and get back into where uh, after verse 13. Okay, now let's go to verse 13 again. In him you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Now notice, in him also, having believed in him, notice in him, believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. We have another, we have a holy day here. Notice, in whom, in him, where does he get his words? In whom, also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. In him, through him, receive the Holy Spirit of promise. Get it? Spirit of Christ bringing the Holy Spirit to the holiest of all. Fulfilling what? Moses coming down from the mountain, the glorified man with the Ten Commandments. Okay? Stuff's just not taught. In him. Through him have we made void the law through faith. No, yea, rather we have established the Torah. Right? After you, notice, heard the word of truth. Right? Right? What does Paul say in Romans 10? Right? The word of faith which we preach. And that you hear, what did he leave out? And to do it. Uh, quoting from Deuteronomy 30 verses 11 through 15. 15, 16. Having believed. Notice. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit. This is what? Shavuot. When did the original disciples receive the Holy Spirit? On the day of Shavuot. There was a the Shavuot Pentecost. There was an initial fulfillment. But when did you get the Holy Spirit? When was Pentecost fulfilled in your life and the Ephesians to whom this letter was written to? Did they have to wait till the appointed time, 50 days after the appointed time when Yeshua was accepted as an eighth day sacrifice and was, was raised on the eighth day? Did, he have, did, you, did you have to wait till the shadow appointed time or did you receive the Holy Spirit Having believed on the day that you believed uh, in him. We go back to Acts chapter 2. I do you believe it's what, verse 33? Hopefully I'm... 
this Yeshua, this Yeshua God has raised up of which we are all witnesses. Verse 33, therefore being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. What did Yeshua say in John chapter 14? I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. I will send the promise of the Father. I will come to you. I will send the comforter. If anyone keeps my word, if anyone loves me, keeps my word, I will come to him. And the Father, I'm paraphrasing, will come to him. We will make our home with him. Where does he get his words at? Where's Paul's getting his words at? Through him you believed and you received the promise okay, of the Spirit. It's all Torah, man. <laughs> yeah, it's just not taught. And what? when were the Ten Commandments given to the shadow man Moses? On Shavuot. They came in to Sinai uh, they, they, on the third day of the third month. They left like on the 15th day of the Days of Unleavened Bread after the Passover. And it brings them at the time of Shavuot. And I'm going to do probably do an, uh, read an article about that. And then it was fulfilled. What was fulfilled? The Spirit of Christ coming down with what? The fulfillment of the Ten Commandments, the love of God shed abroad in our hearts. Okay. Shadow. Fulfillment. Letter. Spirit. Um, written code. Uh, Law of faith, or, or as written by Moses. Fulfillment, which you get by faith. Have we made void the Torah through faith? No, yea, we have established the Torah. It's all through him. Notice that I will give you as a covenant to the nations, to the peoples. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay. Yeah, two more minutes. Okay, through him. Sealed with the Holy Spirit. Of promise. What did he say in Romans 9 verse 8? If anyone does not. Um, talking about. Um, um, let me just. Romans 8 verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. So he identifies two spirits. Paul cannot add nor take away from God's word. What we do have to believe, though, is that the Torah was a shadow of the good things to come. Shadow and fulfillment of that shadow which gets established. Spirit of Christ, Spirit of God, sealed. Okay. It's all Torah. That's why you don't need the law as written by Moses. And we haven't even gotten into where he brushes, of course, dying and being raised into the heavenlies. He weaves in the 
the uh, consecration of the priesthood. From Leviticus chapter 8 and Exodus 28 and 29. So Messiah is the guarantee of our inheritance. Notice that. Where did he get that? Um, when the wave sheaf offering was offered up in Leviticus 23, 9 through 13, what did, what did uh, Yahweh say? That it, this may be accepted on your behalf. Excuse me, which is the guarantee of our inheritance? So it's in him as the, a um, little confused there. Um, I got to cut this off. In him, in which also is the guarantee of our inheritance. The Holy Spirit is not a person. I want to do a video on that. Okay. All right, but it's through the first of the first fruits, the wave sheaf. Verse 14, once again, which is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory? Okay. That redemption will take place on the, at the 120th Jubilee on the Day of Atonement in the latter days, just before the Feast of Tabernacles, um, the reality of it. Okay. Do you have to keep the appointed time? to get your redemption on that 120th Jubilee, on that seventh trumpet, when that seventh trumpet blast uh, will, will sound. No, you got it by faith. And you'll get it in the future by faith. So what I'm trying to tell you in this first in this uh, first part, part one, whew, I just uh, I hate to do parts, but um, uh, well, there's not much more here in uh, chapter one. But then we got to go to chapter two, and uh, and there's a lot in there, man. There's a lot in there, and even spilling over into chapter three, boy. Um, Okay, so have we made void the Torah through faith? Have we made void the law of Moses as written by Moses uh, through faith? No, we have established it. That's the end fulfillments. It's all Torah, man. And it's through him, in him. In him, through him. Uh, so uh, heading up to verse 15, this is what you don't get in their teachings on both sides, that it's in him, through him. Uh, we have redemption. Uh, we get the spirit. We have the feast of uh, the, the Passover, the uh, days of, um, excuse me, the, uh, the Shavuot atonement. It's through him. The Torah of the priesthood, the uh, first who the first who trusted in Christ, eh. you got it by trusting in Messiah. Okay, so who is the fulfiller of the Torah? So not only are the are this man is this man made uh, uh, so far what we're seeing here. Not only is this man made wall of partition abolished in his flesh but for you keeping the Passover every year in, in the appointed time 
was abolished in his flesh because he went outside the camp and fulfilled it. The day of atonement, he took your sins. In him you have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. That's a reference to the day of atonement. He took your sins in his flesh and went outside and destroyed them. So in his flesh, he abolished the day of atonement for you in the letter. You don't have to wait till the appointed time. You got it by faith. And on top of that, if, hey, if you want to do it Moses way, you need a Le Levite priesthood. You need the temple and you need sacrifices. You need the whole shlemiel and shlemazel. Keeping these feasts that you get by faith as written by Moses is not about keeping them for Jesus or Yeshua. If you keep it as written by Moses, as they say, it's got to be written by us by Moses. You need animals and you need their blood. That's not of faith because you had to do it. Along with the festivals and their appointed times, you had to do it. Whew. In the end, you're going to see he'll even address this going to a temple. When you get to at the end of chapter two, I'm going to cut it off, man. It'll be like a three hour video. It's going to be my longest video yet. But when you bring the Torah in and you bring the fulfillments of the Messiah in and you bring in that the, the truth that uh, he is the covenant, he's going to put him and what he accomplished in your heart and in your mind. Well, you can see that uh, it's it's a little more it's it's a lot deeper than what these two movements have been trying to tell you. Both of them are destroying the whole work of God, uh, especially this Hebrew roots who claim to be the guardians of the Torah. They are the destroyers of it. Thank you for your time. This is the end of part one. I'll do part two tomorrow. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening.